I'm in the middle of Thetford Forest in East Anglia. Home to one of the last remaining populations of red squirrels in southern Britain. Except I haven't seen a single one yet. So I'm off to meet Janie Steele for some squirrel spotting tips. It's her job to estimate how many squirrels actually live here. Red squirrels have lived in our woodlands for thousands of years. They were kept as pets, even eaten in centuries gone by, but their population has declined by 75% over the last 30 years. How are you doing, Hi, Claire. I guess the problem with studying endangered species like the red squirrel is you don't get to see them very often. That's right, I can go weeks without seeing one. So why are they in decline? Well, years ago, the red squirrel was all over Britain. But about 100 years ago, the grey squirrel was brought over from America and it competes with the red squirrel for resources such as food and habitat. And we're also faced with this disease problem as well. Uh, there's a disease called parapox virus, which is fatal to the reds, but it doesn't affect the greys. So what can you do to try and help things? Well, my job is to study the red and grey squirrels in their natural habitat and also to try and increase the numbers of red squirrels that we've got here. How can you study them, Jamie, when you never see them? Well, if you come with me, I'll show you. OK. Throughout the forest, Janie uses all sorts of different sampling techniques to try and get a picture of how many squirrels are living here and whether they're reds or greys. So this is a hair tube, just a normal piece of pipe attached to the tree. And we use these to survey an area for squirrels. Um, got some food in the middle there, which serves to attract the squirrels, and some sticky tape at either end. So hopefully when they come along, they actually leave some hair. And you'll be able to tell. On the sticky tape, yeah. I put this one up last week, so we'll have a look. See if any of them have been in the tube for a nibble of those nuts. Right. Uh, looks like grey squirrel there. And that definitely looks like red. It's not always as easy as that to tell, but um, it certainly looks like red squirrel, which means they're around this area, which is great. Good news. Let's have a look, see what else you've got. OK. So this is a piece of the forest floor that I've raked. Uh, it's 50 metres long by a metre wide. And every so often I come along and look for the feeding remains of squirrels. Look, like here, we've got um, a pine cone that they've stripped and taken all the seeds out of. There's one with all the seeds still in it. Um, and what can you tell from this? We can get a rough idea of, of apart from where they're feeding, but how many animals are, are actually feeding in an area. Can you also tell if that's a red or a grey one that's eating that? Unfortunately not, no. Uh, it's a shame, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah, the only way we can tell which species it is is by trapping. And uh, I've got a lot of these traps up around the forest. There's a grey squirrel in here. I set this trap this morning. It looks like it's got a red face, though. Yeah, a lot of people make mistakes uh, identifying greys as reds because of the, the colouring. They've got red on their face and the paws and down the back, too. So what would you do if it was a red? If it was a red squirrel, I'd uh, put one of these on a radio collar, sends out a signal, and um, I can follow it all over the forest. And track it. We set out to find a red squirrel that Janie had tagged earlier. So, Janie, this is how you track the red squirrels, then? That's right, yep, we're just following the strongest signal and uh, I'm certainly getting closer. It seems to be coming from that tree over there, actually. Yep, I would say the, it's up in that tree. So you can't see it, but you know it's there. That's right, yeah, that's the beauty of radio tracking. How many red squirrels do you reckon there are in the forest? Less than 50. The two main threats to red squirrels are competition for resources and disease. Here at Thetford, they're hoping to increase the number of reds by breeding them in captivity. But it's no good releasing them straight away whilst there's still the threat of disease. So Janie's hoping that a vaccine against the parapox virus will be developed before she releases them back into the wild. All over the world, 11,000 species of plants and animals are facing a high risk of extinction, and that number is rising. In almost every case, it's because of the damage that people are doing to the environment. <laughs>